In 1966, one of the first Shark Lab research facilities was established at the California State University Long Beach by marine scientist Don Nelson. We've been studying the behavior of the gray reef shark, a dangerously aggressive species. It was founded as a master's program with the intention to learn more about the ocean's most infamous and unknown ruling predators. Sharks. Less than 10 years after the Shark Lab's creation, one of the greatest fictional stories was written that would single-handedly ruin the reputation of the most important creature to the marine ecosystem. It lives to kill. A mindless eating machine. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil. So the question a lot of people are interested in is why are sharks such a scary animal? Remember, we're a terrestrial animal. We grew up on land. We are not an aquatic animal, and yet we have been taught to fear sharks. So there's, there's been such a tremendous disservice done to the public by Jaws and Shark Week and all of these things that have, you know, really spun up people's very primal fears of what are very scary looking animals. And it was easy for us to take this animal that very few people get to see and turn it into a monster. Sharks are not out to get you at all. They're out to survive. They're gonna do anything that keeps them alive. They aren't these villainous creatures that they're made out to be. Changing that narrative has been very slow. So we have to use those pieces of evidence to figure out what they're trying to do and why they're doing it. So by understanding what influences their behavior, we can keep people safer when they're at the beach. We need to understand how they make decisions. And that's hard to do for an animal who lives in the murk, who hides in the shadows, who makes its living not being seen. For years, the Shark Lab has been one of the front runners for shark research in Southern California, spreading knowledge and education to the world on the importance of sharks and staying safe at the beach. But what is the Shark Lab? A lot of people want to know, what is the Shark Lab? And, and you know what, it's changed over time. What the Shark Lab is to me is it's this research lab that has morphed into something bigger. So we are researching the movement patterns and behaviors of the juvenile white sharks in Southern California. We're a group of students and professors that have a passion for science and conservation and really wanting to get these two principles to mesh and get all of this information out to the public. In terms of research in general for the lab, I see it as kind of one of the, the four most respected labs in the world for white shark research. The more we know about them, the more our broader understanding of these very, very interesting creatures uh, is. It's, it's like a hub where different groups of people can come together and collaborate. So the Shark Club is important because it's kind of stationed in a really amazing area. So Southern California in general is a pretty unique area for biodiversity and also this warm water current that we get up from Mexico where it's a geographic barrier from Point Conception down, which is kind of the just north of Santa Barbara. And the Shark Club is kind of stationed right in the middle there. So not only do we get to study things that are in our own backyard, but we also get to experience all these different kind of ecosystems along Southern California. We look at shark distribution, right? And so if we figure out where these animals are going, we can help provide not only safety information, but we're also taking in environmental data. So we can show how like sharks are reacting to climate change. We're doing science for everybody. Training and fostering young minds. Love it. <laughs> I'm Dr. Chris Lowe. I'm a professor of marine biology and the director of the Shark Lab at Cal State Long Beach. And I have been fortunate enough to be here for the last 25 years. I was actually a grad student in the late 80s through the early 90s, and I got my master's degree working with Don Nelson, who is the founder of the Shark Lab. It's been around since the 60s, and since then they have been the pioneers of pivotal technology and studying a lot of fish and sharks specifically. 
He was, he was probably one of the best people you could possibly work with if you're interested in shark behavior. Considerable distance. And for protection, should we encounter any aggressive sharks? Being a master's student here and working here has given me a whole different kind of outlook and perspective. I can't imagine where I would be without the experience at the Shark Lab. So it's been completely pivotal in forming my own journey as a, as a scientist. All the skills that I've learned in the lab have been directly applicable to even job offerings that I've received. It's given me a sense of belonging. This lab means everything. The Shark Lab is an ecosystem that has touched the lives of so many, protecting a species older than the dinosaurs. But despite their work, sharks still remain the outcasts of society. Why is that? So humans are one of the few animals that can convey information about something dangerous without ever experiencing it yourself. So now imagine you're telling a story about this ferocious animal that you, you encountered when you're out in your boat and it devoured your catch with its gnarly teeth and it was tearing at the flesh. People pay attention. So now you could be a very bad storyteller, but start telling the story about this creature that everyone's going to pay attention to. And the reason why they're programmed to do that is it's evolutionarily in their best interest because that could keep them alive. So unfortunately, that kind of storytelling has kind of vibrated through this, this history of this animal. And it all really started with Jaws. Shark! The shark! Seven years old, I saw the movie Jaws and I was scared of the water. Any body of water that was bigger than a bathtub, I couldn't get in. So Peter Benchley was a brilliant author. He wrote an amazing book and he felt horrible about the way people perceive sharks after his book. It might be perhaps the single biggest cultural influence that I'm certainly aware of in, in the United States. So at the time that the book was written and the movie came out, we were in the nascent stages of understanding anything about sharks. So as a result, it was easy to convince people that there are these menacing, dangerous animals. So Jaws and the movie by Steven Spielberg, who by the way was a Cal State Long Beach graduate, Steven Spielberg. That movie and the book together are probably the key things that started people on this track of sharks are scary, dangerous animals. Every shark attack that's ever happened has probably been publicized because it's something that people feel like they can't control. So there are all sorts of interesting ways that we can better communicate what we're learning about sharks to the public. And I think that's probably one of the most important things that we do, because if we do science just for the sake of science, then only the scientists get to appreciate or benefit from it. That's not who we do science for. We're doing science for everybody. The solution. The Shark Lab is left to pick up the pieces from the damage of the misinformation from a fictional tale. Their new mission? Educate the public on the importance of the marine environment to keep beach users safe and shark populations growing. They are working to ensure the symbiotic relationship of humans and the ocean. So I would say probably one of our most important aspects of the Shark Lab is our education outreach program. We've done a tremendous amount of work in public education about sharks. For us to get them interested and actively involved in what's going on in their own backyard is really important for them to want to care about the ocean and the research that we're doing to help protect it. But if you come from Kansas or you come from Oklahoma and you rarely get to the ocean, it's this vast, scary place for a lot of people. So we have this range of perceptions. And then somewhere along the line, as people get to experience those things, they begin to see a lot of the fear disappear because their understanding and knowledge of that system has changed. So sharks are part of that. We have a, something called Shark Shacks, where we go to any kind of a local event and, and we'll set up a tent and we'll bring all, all of our gadgets and we'll bring shark jaws and all kinds of stuff to engage with the public and tell them about what we do with the lab. You can tell as you're working these events how important it is to, to the public. It's almost a ripple effect of this communication and education around these really important animals. So it's our job as scientists to make it palatable to everybody, understandable.
One of the things that we did this year, one of our grad students published a paper where he collected data over about two years over beaches along the Southern California coast using drones. And the astonishing thing that he discovered is that they are not in the least bit interested in us. You know, we, we aren't really shark food. I think the more exposure people have to something, the more normalized it is. And I think that's been one of the better things that drones have been able to do, not just tell you stats. Because if I tell you shark bites are rare, like, yeah, they are, but it's going to happen to me. But if I show you 8,000 videos of a shark swimming by surfers and nothing happening, you're going to say, oh, okay, they bite people, but no one at this beach, no one at that beach, no one at that beach. So they start to make that connection and really internalize it as a very rare thing. So I think that's one of the things the Shark Lab has to focus on. We can't tell people that you'll never, potentially never be hurt in the ocean or a shark will never bite people. That's not true. We know that's not true. We do know that the probability is really low. The likelihood of you being bitten by a shark is a little bit better than winning the lottery, but just a little. It's just another thing that you might have to be mindful of, but it's not this big impending boogeyman that it used to be, or boogie shark, whichever you want. They're fascinating animals that have been here for so long, hundreds of millions of years. They're an apex predator and they're at the top of the food chain, which means the abundance of them affects every level below them in the food pyramid. So for these juvenile white sharks in Southern California, we're still trying to figure out what those behaviors and habits are, but we know that they're an integral part of the ecosystem. They're feeding down certain species, controlling those populations and without them, the ecosystem will be out of balance. Especially in Southern California where there is a lot of high density cities and a lot of you know pollution and garbage and things like that can end up in the ocean here. So the more people care about the ocean, understand what it, what it provides us is really important for people to want to invest their time in it. Their job isn't done yet. Technology advances and research improves so that the most accurate data is provided to the public. And as people come and go through the ecosystem that is the Shark Lab, they leave their mark. So the, the culture and lab is really this whole like ecosystem in itself of there's everyone kind of has the role that they play and everyone fits into that role really well. Yeah, that's the perfect way to describe it. This ecosystem is like my second home. You know, there are trophic levels and everything is kind of reliant upon each other. We are absolutely an ecosystem in and of itself. The Shark Lab is a family. Um, we go through a lot together. We come out stronger for it. And I'm constantly excited to see what we're doing next. It's really important that the next generation of scientists take our ethics seriously. In other words, we have to be true to our process and we have to be honest. We're just trying to get at the truth. The thing that I've learned over time is that nature is incredibly resilient. We've seen it with shark populations after they're protected. Um, what that means to me though is that really in order to change the way things are going, it's gonna come down to people. We've created a lot of these problems, we can fix them. And what I'm really excited about is this next generation of Shark Lab scientists who realize that, and they're the ones who give me hope for the future. But they can't do it alone. It's up to the public to make a change. It's up to you. Educate, vote, donate, communicate. Do your part to save the ocean, and together, we can see the lasting impact.